Welcome to Victory Today. Pastor Tony and I are so excited about this upcoming week's broadcast. I'll be teaching in the area of walking in the abundance of God's grace through the power of joy. Yes, power that is available to you when you and I maintain the joy of the Lord. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And God wants us to walk in the strength and the power of His might. And we do that through this thing called joy. Joy is the power of God to overcome anything. It also carries the weight of this definition of being totally satisfied in God and God alone. So it doesn't matter what adversity comes against you, how the enemy attacks you, or whatever issues may be going on in your life. If you would maintain the joy of the Lord, you will experience a strength that comes from God that will cause you to overcome that adversity. Now listen to the broadcast and remember over the next few weeks we're going to be talking about the subject of the abundance of God's grace through the power of joy. Stay tuned. Let us now join Cynthia Brazelton for today's message. Glory to God. And we're just growing stronger and stronger in the things of God. When the devil looks like he want to hit you and knock you down, he, you realize what strength you really have. And we're growing stronger. We're not defeated. We're not bowing down to anything. We're standing strong in what God has created us and called us to do. Amen? Tell your neighbors, they stand strong. Go oh, with me to your Bible, Romans chapter 5, verse 17. And Pastor Tony's been teaching on this abundance of God's grace in this area. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. And it says, verse 7, are you there? Two of you. Romans chapter 5, verse 17 says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Because of Adam's sin or one man's offense, death reigned. But because of one man's obedience, you and I receive the abundance of God's grace and the gift of righteousness. And it says we shall reign in life by Christ Jesus. Reigning, God created you and I to reign in life. He created you and I to win in life. He created you and I to be victorious. There's no area in your life where you should be experiencing defeat. God created you and I to reign in this life because of the abundance of his grace. And God has given to you and I the abundance of his grace. So whatever area of your life that you need to experience or you need the grace of God, it is there for you so that you can continue to be victorious in every area of your life. Verse 21, again, it says, verse 20, I'm saying, it says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Now, because of death, sin entered into the world. But he said, where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. If you could describe the word abound, it is like what we sang about this morning, the waves of the Spirit. It says, we're sin abound. Here, death reigned, and because of that, sin entered in, or sin reigned, and death entered in. It came in like a wave. But we're sin abound. Grace abounded much more. Those waves override the waves of sin and death. And it's like a tsunami overriding those things. And though there's sin and though there are things that happen contrary to the will of God, God's grace overrides those things and is there for every single believer. And his, his grace comes in like waves in your life. And it continues to come in like waves in your life, making you stronger and stronger in the things of God. Look at me, Ephesians chapter 6. We're talking about growing stronger in the abundance of God's grace, going beyond our human ability and tapping in the supernatural ability of God. 
being endowed with a power from on God, creating us to be and to do all that God created us to be and to do. He created us to rule and to reign. He created us to be victorious and to win. Hallelujah. I need you to hear this this morning with your spiritual ears. It is always my objective in teaching the Word of God is to take you out of this world and cause you to stand in a world where you come from. Hallelujah. That you will live beyond the natural, that you will live beyond just what you can see, that you can live beyond just the mere circumstances of life, and that you will step out into a realm of the supernatural and you begin to see from God's perspective and you see through the eyes of the Word of God and see what God has to say to you so that you don't just live defeated, that you don't just live by everything that just happens in the world, but you live beyond that and you know that your life, because of that, you can affect change everywhere you go. You set the atmosphere everywhere you go. And so sin may abound, but His grace abounds much more. Hallelujah. God has given us the abundance of His grace so that we can reign in this life. In Ephesians chapter 4, I mean chapter 6, Paul said to them in verse 10, finally, somebody said finally. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Finally. I mean, after everything that's said and done, finally. I don't care what's going on in your life, finally. I don't care what the devil has said, what he is doing, finally. I don't care what report you have given, was given to you. I don't care what the doctor said, what the teacher said, what the lawyer said, what the creditor said, what your neighbor said, what your child said, what your husband said. I don't care of all the things that you may have experienced in life, finally. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Those circumstances don't mean anything in your life. Just be strong in the Lord and it will change those circumstances. Or don't allow those circumstances to have any effect on your life. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Now, Paul is concluding this in the sixth chapter to the book in the book of Ephesians to the children of Ephesus, and he's talking to them. He said a lot of things to them. You are very familiar in chapter 1, he talks about that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened, that they would know the hope of their calling, that they would know the exceeding greatness of his power that he wrought in Christ Jesus, that you and I would know that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, raised you and I up together with him. The second chapter said we caused him to us to sit together with him. That is a place of authority. It causes you from that place to rule and to reign in this life, causes you to be strong in this life. And he said in the third chapter that he will grant to you the riches of his glory, that you will have an understanding of the love of God, that you will be strengthened with might in your inner man, that you won't walk as mere men, but that you would know the love of God that passes your own understanding, that God wanted you and I to know these things so that it will continue to encourage us and to strengthen us in the things of God. And he goes on to tell us that in all of this, that God wants you and I to experience all of who he is, what he has for us. He doesn't want us to stay the same. He wants us to be changed every time we encounter the things of God, every time we get revelation. So he says, I want you to understand something that passes your understanding. It is a love that God has for the people of God, for the saints of God. He wants us to be rooted and grounded in that love. That love that when it looks like things are not going the way you think, but when you know the love of God and what God has for you, it strengthens you. Hallelujah. It causes you to experience what God has for you. He doesn't want us to be ignorant to things that are going on, but he wants us to be always having God's knowledge and God's will in the earth. He says he doesn't want us to be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. He wants you to know what his will is. And of all those things he's saying to him, he said, finally, be strong in the Lord 
and in the power of his might. Tell your neighbors that be strong. Now with this strength of him telling you and I to be strong is not your strength in and of yourself. He wants you to be strong with the strength of God. Now, said there are times in your life where you experience things and you just, I'm just trying to be strong, I'm just trying to be strong. As long as you just try and be strong, trying to be strong, chances are you won't be strong. But when you know the strength of God, hallelujah, then I can be strong, hallelujah. Because I know that God is there and I can lean upon his strength and so therefore being strong. In Zechariah chapter 4, turn with me there. Glory to God. Zechariah chapter 4, that's Old Testament. Next to the last book in the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter 4, page 1122. Hallelujah. Verse 6, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So it's not by my might, not by my ability, not by my power, but by his spirit, saith the Lord. So it's not just my natural power or my ability or my strength or anything that I could do, but it's by the Spirit of God. That's what we lean upon. That's the strength of God that we have. And he says, so it's not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, said the Lord. Verse 7, who art thou, O great mountain, before, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone therefore with sayings, crying, grace, grace unto it. Hallelujah. What is this mountain that is before you? Think about it. What is it that is so big in your life that is standing in your way that is causing you not to experience the grace of God? What is this great mountain? It shall be made a plain. It shall be brought down. Hallelujah. And he said, and the headstone thereof with sayings. Grace. Hallelujah. Because of God's grace, his unfailing love, his mercy toward us, his favor, his power, great grace unto it. And so God gives us the strength by his spirit, by his grace. His grace strengthens us for everything that we encounter in life. We have to live from this place of grace. Remember, we don't receive the grace of God to no good use. We receive the help of God. We live in the abundance of God's grace that will cause us to reign and rule in this life. Look with me to 2 Timothy. Second Timothy chapter two. <coughs> we thank God for the abundance of his grace. Tear down every mountain that may be in our way to experience what God has predestined and planned for us to have. Hallelujah. Verse one, it says, Thou therefore my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Somebody said, be strong in the grace. Literally, it just, just takes the weight off of you. Just be strong in God's ability, God's grace, his endowment of power. Listen, it's not according to your ability. It goes beyond your human ability and tapping into that supernatural ability given to us by God. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. 
that thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that wars entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And so he says, you've got to endure hardness as a good soldier, and the same grace that you receive, teach others how to live in this grace so they can experience the grace of God as well. Any man that's in a warfare, they're not concerned about civilian life, Amplified Bible says. They're focused, their attention on where they are and who they're serving. That should be your focus. That should be your attention. Your attention should be on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that whatever you go through, God, know, knowing that God is there and that you can be strong in the grace of God. His grace is sufficient for everything you go through. And he will be there to strengthen you in every area of your life. This victory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And his grace is sufficient for every, every area of your life. Remember we said in Proverbs 24 and 10 that if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Now you don't know. You can say, well, I'm very strong. I'm strong in the things of God. But you don't know until adversity hits you how strong you really are. Now understand when things don't happen. I know we don't plan for things that we don't plan for hardness. But he said endure hardness as a good soldier. Now when things come your way... How you react and how you stand in those times will let you know just how strong you really are. And remember, your strength is in God. Your strength is as leaning and trusting in God. But if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Daniel chapter 11 says that a man that knows God shall be strong and do exploits. Now, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. You don't know God. You don't know God like you think you know God. When you know God, when you have heaven's perspective on life, when you have heaven's heart, when you have the heart of God concerning things in life, it strengthens you to endure whatever comes your way because you know that those things are not there designed to move you. You're only moved by God. And it's what God has to say, not the circumstances. I mean, all things are possible to him that can believe. My belief is not in the situation. My belief is in God. Hallelujah. Tell me to Daniel chapter 11. Glory to God. So I know that many of us have been in the place one time or another in your life where things, something may have come up and you have, you look like you would have fainted. Anybody ever been there? You don't know how you're going to make it the next day. You don't know what's going on and you're like, God, I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if I'll ever get through this. You may feel like I don't even want to be here no more. Oh my God, I just, Lord Jesus, if you could just come get me. How many be, ever been there? If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So I need to go to God who gives me the strength for every area of my life so that in the day of adversity where I can stand and having done all, glory to God, knowing that God is in control of every situation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Daniel, are you there? Verse 32. Just want you to see that. And as such do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. But the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Exploits make full use of what they know. <laughs> make full use of and derive the benefits that God has given them. Those that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. You know, how in, a, in a negative sense, when somebody exploits somebody else, they use them. They take everything they have and they use it for their benefits. Those that know their God <laughs> will use God and all that he has and 
and use it for their benefit. I know my God's a healer. I'm, I know my God's a deliverer. I know my God is a way maker. I know he's a comforter. I know God. Those that know their God will be strong and do exploits. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You ever talk to somebody who's talking and you know they don't know God? And I don't mean they're not saved. I mean they're born again Christians and they're talking and it's like, why are you saying all these negative things? Do you know God? See, you only faint when you don't know God. And your strength is small when you don't know God. But when you know God, those that know their God will be strong and do great exploits. They will see the hand of God. They will know God. Hallelujah. You know, Paul got that same revelation himself. We read it over and over and over again. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We read it over and over again. He's out ministering the word of God. The enemy is attacking him on every side. And you may feel like you're under attack of the enemy. And he's just constantly coming at you. It's just one thing after another. The Bible doesn't say how many attacks Paul was under, but obviously he's under a lot of attacks. And he said he prayed to God three times already about these things. Not that he was under three attacks, but that he was just continuing praying about these attacks that was coming against him. And God, he's, he's like, God, you know, this enemy is coming against me in all these areas of my life. In verse 9, and, he said unto, and then the Lord said unto Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, there's an area that Paul did not know God. But when God began to speak to him, when he got a word from God, he begins to strengthen him because of the revelation of what God has spoken to him. Nothing in Paul's life at that moment has changed. He's still under attack. But something on the inside of Paul changed. And it didn't matter about the attacks anymore. As a matter of fact, he did the opposite of what you would think anybody would do. And he said, most gladly. Therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches in necessities and persecution and distresses. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, hallelujah, then am I strong. I bet you that confused the devil. Hallelujah. He says, why aren't you crying? Why aren't you depressed? Why aren't you down? Why aren't you sad? Why aren't you grieving? I must gladly take pleasure in my infirmity that the power of God may rest upon me. So it doesn't matter what is coming my way. When I am weak, that's when I'm strong. Because I depend on God and God alone. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what it looks like. You mean to tell me you lost your job and you shouting, I got to give God praise because the victory is in the praise. change anything. Crying is not going to change anything. There's victory when we praise God. God created us to reign in this life and His grace is sufficient for you in every area of your life. More than enough for you. Now the translation said, my grace is sufficient. Means that thou art not permitted to sink under the affliction. Your enemy shall not be able to prevail against you. And Paul said, most gladly, therefore, I glory in my infirmities that the power of God, use this illustration from Isaiah chapter 4, that it will pitch a tent over me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. His power reigns over your life. You're not moved by the circumstances of life. You move circumstances. Yeah. Hallelujah. It is how you view and how you look at life. You may have lost a job. But how many of God got something better for you? 
Glory to God. And if you lost anything unjustly, God has his way of turning things around in your behalf. He said, vengeance is mine and I will repay, I will recompense, saith the Lord God. You will receive double for all your trouble. The devil is stupid. He should have never messed with you. Because God will see to it that you will always be victorious. You'll always be on top. You'll never be defeated. No matter what he brings your way, you'll never go under. You'll always win. You'll always win. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So God has given us the victory in every area of our lives. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2. I'm sorry, chapter 1. Hallelujah. Strength is small. So I need to go to God who gives me the strength for every area of my life so that in the day of adversity where I can stand and having done all, glory to God. Knowing that God is in control of every situation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Daniel, are you there? Verse 32. Just want you to see that. And as such do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. But the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Exploits make full use of what they know. <laughs> make full use of and derive the benefits that God has given them. Those that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. You know, how in, a, in a negative sense, when somebody exploits somebody else, they use them. They take everything they have and they use it for their benefits. Those that know their God <laughs> will use God and all that he has and use it for their benefit. I know my God's a healer. I'm go I know my God's a deliverer. I know my God is a way maker. I know he's a comforter. I know God. Those that know their God will be strong and do exploits. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You ever talk to somebody who's talking and you know they don't know God? And I don't mean they're not saved. I mean they're born again Christians and they're talking and it's like, why are you saying all these negative things? Do you know God? So you only faint when you don't know God. And your strength is small when you don't know God. But when you know God... Those that know their God will be strong and do great exploits. They will see the hand of God. They will know God. Hallelujah. You know, Paul got that same revelation himself. We read it over and over and over again. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We read it over and over again. He's out ministering the word of God. The enemy is attacking him on every side. And you may feel like you're under attack of the enemy. And he's just constantly coming at you. It's just one thing after another. The Bible doesn't say how many attacks Paul was under. But obviously he's under a lot of attacks. And he said he prayed to God. Three times already about these things. Not that he was under three attacks, but that he was just continuing praying about these attacks that was coming against him. And God, he's, he's like, God, you know, this enemy is coming against me in all these areas of my life. In verse 9, and, he said unto, and then the Lord said unto Paul, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, there's an area that Paul did not know God. But when God began to speak to him, when he got a word from God, he begins to strengthen him because of the revelation of what God has spoken to him. Nothing in Paul's life at that moment has changed. He's still under attack. But something on the inside of Paul changed. And it didn't matter about the attacks anymore. As a matter of fact, he did the opposite of what you would think anybody would do. And he said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, 
that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in affirmings, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, hallelujah, then am I strong. I bet you that confused the devil. Hallelujah. He says, why aren't you crying? Why aren't you depressed? Why aren't you down? Why aren't you sad? Why aren't you grieving? I must gladly take pleasure in my infirmity that the power of God may rest upon me. So it doesn't matter what is coming my way. When I am weak, that's when I'm strong. Because I depend on God and God alone. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what it looks like. You mean to tell me you lost your job and you shouting, I got to give God praise because the victory is in the praise. Hallelujah. Being sad is not going to change anything. Crying is not going to change anything. There's victory when we praise God. God created us to reign in this life and His grace is sufficient for you in every area of your life. More than enough for you. Now the translation said, my grace is sufficient. Means that thou art not permitted to sink under the affliction. Your enemy shall not be able to prevail against you. And Paul said, most gladly, therefore, I glory in my infirmities that the power of God, use this illustration from Isaiah chapter 4, that it will pitch a tent over me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. His power reigns over your life. You're not moved by the circumstances of life. You move circumstances. Hallelujah. It is how you view and how you look at life. You may have lost a job, but how many of God got something better for you? Glory to God. And if you lost anything unjustly, God has his way of turning things around in your behalf. He said, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, I will recompense, saith the Lord God. You will receive double for all your trouble. The devil is stupid. He should have never messed with you, because God will see to it that you will always be victorious. You'll always be on top. You'll never be defeated. No matter what he brings your way, you'll never go under. You'll always win. You always win. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So God has given us the victory in every area of our lives. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2. I'm sorry, chapter 1. Hallelujah. No buts about it. You always win. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, Pastor Cynthia, it doesn't look like I won in that situation. It didn't look like it came out the way I should. You don't, you need to see it from God's perspective. Look through the eyes of God's word. Somebody said, I always win. So I am victorious. Praise God. Somebody shout, I got the victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when you have the Word of God, I mean, that's the strength of God. His Word strengthens you. Second Peter chapter 1, he said, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. How? Through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Now, Timothy said, Be strong in the grace of God. Let the grace of God strengthen you. And you and I are strengthened and when those that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. How are we strengthened? How are that? He says, grace and peace is multiplied unto you through the knowledge of him and through the knowledge of God, through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. When you come to know God, and it's, listen to me, it is in through those times of adversity that you really come to know God. Because we can read about God being a healer and a deliverer, and we believe the word of God. 
But when those adversities come and hit your home, and there's sickness or disease or something that come your way, and then you see the power of God in your life, and you'll come to know God as a healer. You experience His grace, His healing grace, His saving grace, His delivering grace. Hallelujah. You say, well, no, my mama didn't get healed. She went home to be with heaven. How many know there ain't nobody sick in heaven? Ain't nobody defeated in heaven. Ain't nobody sad in heaven. Ain't nobody going through in heaven. Heaven is a real place that God has all the comforts of life, his life, for the people of God. We always win. And grace is being, we talked about the abundance of God's grace. It is multiplied to you through knowledge. So you've got to come to know God. There's so much of God that he's yet to reveal to us and that God wants to reveal to us. He just wants a people who are hungry to know him, that desire more than anything to know how God is and who he is. Even in heaven itself, they're learning if I could use every day. They're learning throughout eternity the nature of who our God is, His attributes, the makeup of who our God is. And God desires to reveal Himself through the people of God. So when you and I come to know God, we can transfer what we know to somebody else and cause them to live a life that God desires them to live in this earth. So it's so important that you know your God. You know God. Spend time in His presence. Spend time in the Word of God. Come to know Him. He wants to be known. He wants to make Himself strong in your behalf. He doesn't want you to faint in the day of adversity. He wants you to be strong. Glory to God. And to know the power that He's made available to you and I. Verse 3, it says, According to His divine power, He has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Hallelujah. He has given us this, this power and everything that we need that pertains to this life. And he's given us all of these things through the knowledge of him. You got to know him. He's given you everything for this life. You just got to know God. And it's revealed to you through the knowledge of him that have called you to glory and virtue. I hear you saying, Cynthia, Pastor Cynthia, how do, how do I know God? I, I don't know how to know God. What you're hearing now is causing you to know God. Hallelujah. It's his word that calls you to know God. It's his presence that reveals to you a knowing on the inside of you about things of God that cannot be revealed to you through the senses. It is something that's supernatural that takes place on the inside of the believer. Your spirit that is so divinely connected to God. When you hear the word of God, there's something that leaps on the inside of you. Confirming what you are hearing is God's will for your life. It strengthens you. It builds you up. The Bible said that the word of grace is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Everything that pertains to life and godliness becomes yours through the knowledge of him that has called you to glory, to manifest his presence in an excellence. That God, this virtue, this power, this excellence that God wants to be seen in the earth. He wants you now to have this understanding of it. He wants you to be strong. Somebody said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Isaiah chapter 40. Hallelujah. Verse 29. He said he gives, faint, he gives power to the faint. See, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. He didn't just leave you there. Many of you say, yes, there's a time in my life I fainted. I didn't want to give up. I didn't want to get up. I wanted to give up. Didn't want to be here anymore. I didn't know how I was going to make it. But he said he gives power to the faint. Hallelujah. He didn't leave you in that state. He gives power to the faint. Why? How do you know that? You're still here. Glory 
saints of God. Hallelujah. You woke up this morning. You're in the church this morning. As hard as it may have seemed for you to get here and to be here, you're still here. Why? Because he gives power to the faint. faint. He gives you ability. He gives you strength. Even when you say, I can't make it, you made it. You're still here. And you made it by the grace of God. It wasn't osmosis. You just made up your mind, well, I'm going to get up. No. It by the grace of God you are who you are. It's by his grace that you're still here. Why? Because he gives power to the faint. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases your strength. Hallelujah. Do you see the revelation that Paul got? My grace is sufficient for you, Paul. You don't have any permission to faint under any affliction. The devil cannot triumph over you. You will win. I'll give power to the faint and those that have no might. You don't have any ability of your own. You have exhausted all of who you are. You have exhausted all of your senses. You have exhausted. You can't pray no more. You can't talk no more. You can't cry no more. You can't do it no more. God said, I'll give you an increase of strength. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Those that have no might, I will increase your strength. Oh, glory to God. God, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to pray. I don't know what else. He said, it's not by power, not by might, but it's by my spirit. And when you have no might, I will increase your strength. Glory to God. God will continue to increase you more and more. He said, even the, young, the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. He understands. There are times when you will faint and you will fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, those that know their God, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I shall not faint. I cannot faint. He gives power to the faint. And when it looks like I have no might, he increases my strength. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody said, we're growing stronger in the abundance of God's grace. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Those that serve God, that praise God in the midst of adversity, you give God the praise. You're not blaming God for your adversity. You're praising God through your adversity. You're praising God because of the breakthrough that you decree and declare that would belong to you. We praise God. Those that wait upon the Lord, those that serve God, shall be strong. They'll renew their strength. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6. Be strong in the Lord. Come on, turn to it. Ephesians chapter 6. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against all the wiles of the devil, all the tricks of the devil. Stand. Listen. 
stand against the tricks of the enemy. Put on the whole armor of God so you can stand against. Not stand with. Stand against. Are you hearing me? Oh, this is so key. When the enemy comes against you, you have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. When he comes against you in your home and your relationships, you can't stand with the enemy. You got to stand against. Stand against all the wiles of the enemy. That means you got to recognize the enemy. Listen, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Somebody shall stand. Verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you, have, wherewith you shall be able to squinch all the fiery dots of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always. Praying always. So he says, stand, and having therefore, stand, having your loins girded about with truth. No matter what's coming your way, somebody shall stand. stand. How can I stand in the midst of trouble? God will strengthen you. If you just have an unction on the inside of you just to stand, God will see to it that you stand. And he will continue to strengthen you in the midst of adversity. Having done all, stand. And he said, be strong. And here's the key, again, in the Lord. Understanding that your strength comes from the Lord and that the Lord is always with you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God is always with you. Tell your neighbor, say, God is always with you. Sometimes we, we go through things and we don't think God is with us. God, don't you see what I'm going through? I don't know how I'm going to make it. God, where are you at? Somebody say, God is always with you. Tell yourself, God is always with me. And it's an act of my faith to believe the word of God, knowing that he said he is always with me. And so because I know that God is with me, I can be strong. Moses is, a, is preparing Joshua for what God has called him to do. Moses is no longer going to be taking the children of Israel into the promised land. God is commissioning Joshua to take the children of Israel into the promised land. And so Moses is instructing him what he would need to be able to do the job. Deuteronomy chapter 31. Now here God is preparing the children of Israel to enter in to the promise that God has for them. Enter into the promised land. God has promises for you. The Bible says all the promises of God are in him, yes, and in him, amen. God has made you a promise, and he will see to it that every promise that he has made to you will be fulfilled. But there is an enemy out there that doesn't want you to receive or see the fulfillment of the promises of God that he has for you. But it does not about the enemy's plot or his tricks or his wiles against you. If you stand, and having done all stand, you will see the promises of God being fulfilled in your life. But you've got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, how many know they have been through this before? God said, I want you to enter into the promised land. And they went out there to spy out the land, and they saw the giants. They fainted because they didn't know God.
had the ability to fulfill his promise. So they stayed in the wilderness for 40 years. And 40 years they were defeated because God made them a promise that he has shown up able to fulfill, but they did not believe it, did not believe that promise. And so for 40 years, they're in the wilderness, and now they're about to leave out again. And now God said, okay, this time, you've got to be strong. It doesn't matter what enemy you see, what adversity comes your way, you cannot allow the devil to stop you from entering what God has for you. You've got to be strong. Don't be dismayed. Listen, God is with you. He never intended for them to go into that promised land alone. He would always be with them. They thought they had to do it on their own selves. But it was the grace of God that gave them the ability to enter in to that place. And so, Deuteronomy chapter 31, Moses speaks. Thank you for joining us on Victory Today. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. I trust you were blessed by the message. And remember, God says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, it is the trying of your faith that will produce for you in every area of your life, where you'll walk away perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And stay tuned next week. We'll continue this lesson on growing in the abundance of God's grace through joy. God bless you. Next time on Victory Today. Allow this to be a day of celebration that you get to sit and hear the word of God. That alone ought to give you strength. Hallelujah. That alone ought to give you the joy that comes from God. And so he's saying that this joy is this power and empowerment that comes to you that will cause you and I to overcome anything. Remember, it's a grace. So it goes beyond your human ability for you to tap into a power that causes you to be and to do all who God has created you to be and to do. In other words, God is saying no circumstance can stop you from being who God created you to be, regardless of what they are. You know, sometimes people are saying... again for Victory Today with Tony and Cynthia Brazelton. And remember, 1 John 4, 17, as Jesus is, so are we.